Hello, everyone. Good afternoon or good day, whatever time zone you're joining us on. Uh, really appreciate you all joining us for this masterclass, which we run every month or two. We run a different masterclass on a topic that's relevant to the things that you're working through in your firm. So I trust that uh, you joining us today is because uh, brand and team and hiring is something that is relevant to you and is uh, something that you want to learn more about. Uh, my name is Karen Rayburn. I'm the owner and founder of PF. And those of you, some of you will know who I am, perhaps have a copy of my first book, which I'm very excited about, The Accountant Marketer. If you do not, uh, you can get it anywhere books are sold. And it's on my website, it's on Amazon. But the important thing is that The Accountant Marketer is, is about the very thing that we're talking about today, the fact that you're an accountant and you also, by default of being a business owner and having a business, are a marketer. And you can be a really good marketer. You can struggle a little with marketing, but you are a marketer. And what we're going to be looking at today is how marketing impacts the the hiring and the team members and the culture and the branding, which there's a lot of similarities to how marketing impacts having clients you love. Today, we're going to talk about how that impacts team members you love. And speaking of team members we love, Elaine is joining us today from PF. So I'll let Elaine give you a little intro into who she is and what she loves about working at PF. Hello, I'm Elaine, head of client experience, and I've been with PF now for ex almost exactly three years. So I enjoy it. I've been here a while now. <laughs> um, and I think the the thing that I love most about working for PF is the creativity and the company culture. We're very big on culture, which we'll talk a little bit about later on. And it really is. I know a lot of people um, and a lot of people that go through our hiring process will say to us, wow, like you guys really are who you say you are so it is really it's just lovely to be part of that and yeah I love my job and love being here at PF. Thanks and and what is interesting about what we're going to talk about with culture is that this is something you do need to work at and need to craft and need to make happen for your firm because like Elaine said it doesn't just so happen that we have all these great people at PF. I posted recently on LinkedIn about almost every time I go to events, I have people being like, wow, everyone on your team is really interesting and funny and knowledgeable and really like all of them. And I'm like, we didn't just get lucky. And that's the thing for you as well. When you're hiring team members that you love who stay with you as long as they want to be with you and need to be with you, and that is the right place for them, you know, we all know that company is not a family. People do come and go at times, but it's a community and it's a culture. And these principles of marketing that we're going to talk about relate to team members as well as clients. So we'd love to use this chat box. Any questions that you have or wonderings as we go through this are welcome. But I'd love for you to put in the chat box right now, uh, if you were to rate it on a scale of one to 10, if you were to, to hire for somebody in your firm tomorrow, how would you feel about that hiring process? Would you be like 10, excited, this is going to be amazing, we're going to find the best person ever? Would you be a one, which is, oh man, we got to hire, but this is going to be tough. Where would you be? Just throw a number into the chat box. There's no right or wrong answer to this. You know, nobody's tracking this and checking up on it. Just how do you feel about hiring? How does that impact you as you consider hiring? Maybe some of you are considering hiring right now or in the middle of hiring, which is why you're on this masterclass. But I'd love to hear how you feel about hiring. And while you're in there writing things in the chat box, I'd love to also hear what you've been trying. What do you use for hiring? Do you use LinkedIn? Do you use recruiters? LinkedIn is what will get you the best people or Indeed or any of those things. It's those things can all be great. It's the same thing with marketing to clients. You can use social media. You can use blog posts. You can use articles. There's loads of things you can use. But at the end of the day, 
It's having that brand that reflects who you truly are. So the right team members and the right clients come to you because they understand that and find that appealing and want to be connected to you. So this is why your brand, your marketing brand to your clients and your marketing brand to your potential team members, in this case, your employer brand needs to reflect who you truly are. Who is it that you actually are as a firm? Now, for some of you, this is a good thing. You have an amazing firm that maybe isn't fully reflected in your brand and there's a little work to do. For some of you, this could be a, oh, there could be a little scary moment there. Like, uh, do we really want people to see who we truly are? You know, isn't the hiring process for showing all these great things and then, you know, they figure out the stuff that maybe isn't so perfect once they come in. But the point is you want to have a brand that is authentic and real so that when people come in, they come in and say, yes, that is what I thought it was, or even that is better. So the employer brand, and we're going to talk about some specific things you can do about how to reflect who you truly are so that the potential team member comes and says, that is intriguing to me. I'm willing to go through this hiring process. I'm interested, beyond interested. I'm intrigued. I'm I'm passionate about working for this company and they really, really want to. And the beautiful part about that is that puts you less in the, oh gosh, I hope we can prove to these people this is a good firm and more you get to pick the kind of team members that you want because your brand is reflecting who you are. So for some people that's a fit and for other people it's not. For some people, they're just going to say, I don't want to work for that firm. And that's okay if they're not the right person. So we're going to go through a couple uh, sections and areas. There's three of them that we're going to go through to things that you can do. And when you look at these, like identify your true company culture, it may sound kind of broad and kind of vague, but we're going to break it down for you to identify some specific things you can do so that your hiring process becomes just that little bit easier for you and the best team members come to you. So Elaine, I'll let you take it from there. Yeah, thanks, Karen. Mm -hmm. So we mentioned it a couple of times already, creating a positive, inspiring company culture really is key to your employer brand and to attracting the right people to your firm. So there's a couple of questions I want you just to consider or be thinking about um, as we're talking through some points here. And we don't need you to put this in the chat. This is just something that I want you to be thinking about yourself or start thinking about. What do you want your company culture to be? And then the second question, what actually is it? What What is true? Because if these you might have and you do have a company culture right now but is it the one that you want to be reflecting through your brand and using to attract um, ideal team members if these two things are in conflict with each other there may be some cultural work you need to do before you can start um, hiring and pushing out through your marketing to try and attract the right people so you might have thought about culture and some of the things that I'm about to mention already. It may have been a while, but really the the goal, the ideal thing with your culture is to inspire your future and existing team members and have them be able to connect with your firm. So what do you want your culture to be? And how are you going to create that authentic company culture? And really what it comes back to is you have to have clarity around your purpose and the direction that you want to have for your business. So the elements you need to get some clarity around are your mission and vision, your values, your tone of voice, and then also be clear about how you are going to communicate your story. So we were talking before um, there where Karen was saying, showing that human side to your firm as well, that's super important. I know that you are all accountants 
And so that might feel very unnatural to you, but having that connection there is what is going to help people feel that they are in the right place and feel excited about the opportunity with working with you. So to get clarity around your purpose and establish your mission and vision, take it back to your why. If you have not thought about this for a little while and if you are trying to actively hire right now, you might be caught in the weeds, but take some time and some space to get back to the why, why you're doing what you do and the direction that you want to take the business. The reason it's important for you to be clear on that is so that you can communicate it to your team and to your ideal team members that might be coming in. It's important that you can show them where the company is going, but then also where they can have some input and make an impact in their own in their own way. Just so, to add a point to that one, Elaine, I was thinking about how so many accountancy firms when they're hiring work really hard on getting the role description right. So you're saying, here's the title. We need a bookkeeper. We need an account manager, whatever it be. And these are all the things, the stuff that we want you to do. And you work really hard at that role description. So you're super clear so that the potential team member knows exactly what work they're going to be doing. Whereas when you think about exactly what Elaine was saying about the ideal team member, same concept as the ideal client. What is the ideal team member actually wondering? Okay, they might be wondering about the job, but what they're wondering is, will I like these people? Am I going to want to show up nine to five every day, five days a week? There's a ton of time and effort that goes into this. Am I going to enjoy being there? Am I going to want to hang out with these people either outside of work or at least at work? Am I going to enjoy the kind of clients that I get to work with? So as you're listening to what we're sharing today, I want you to really turn your attention to what is it that your ideal team member is wondering and then answer that. What is so great about your firm? What do you offer besides the, here's the role, here's the salary, here's a few benefits. What does it feel like to be there? And that's back to Elaine's point about you you have to know or you have to find out from the team what that true culture is so that you can share it. Yeah, absolutely. And having clear values established and actually leaning into the values, like all of these things have to connect onto each other and doing this work where you're looking at all of these pieces together is what's going to make sure that you're representing that your firm in the right way. Because I can imagine that we have all probably had a job at one point in our careers where you're like, oh, this is not what I thought it was going to be. Yeah, And having a team that is delivering the services that you provide that are aligned with your values, that's the thing that's going to hold that culture together. And so just thinking about your your values as something that you are using at every single point in your business, like having them at the forefront when it's embedded properly into your culture, anytime you go to send an email, anytime you talk to a client, um, anytime you make a decision on a hire, that is the thing that is at the forefront. Uh, We do a pillar fit questionnaire when anybody comes through the hiring process because it's a pillar and value fit because it's so important to us and we're very protective as um, about who is coming in to the the business because the culture is so important. So- Which is uh, just a point there again, is that is what your ideal team member is wondering. Like you can say these are your values, but they're wondering, is this for real? And this is why we're encouraging you to identify what your true company culture is, because if you try to show anything that is not real, they will pick it up either in the hiring process or worse after you hire them and go, wait a minute, this doesn't match. You said you were like this and it's not like this. So that's what we want you thinking about now. And we're going to need to be really honest about what the true company culture is. I'm guessing most of you have a really good company culture. I I certainly hope so. And I certainly trust that you're working on that. And the more that you can show what that really is like, and we'll give you some examples, uh, then the easier it is for the ideal team member who is considering it and wondering about it. Yeah. 
the thing that will help you with living out those values as well is tone of voice. So that is the thing that helps. That's the expression of your brand and the expression of your values and will be the tool that shows that you mean what you say with your values and and the direction that you're trying to push the business. The last part is your story. Um, We all get drawn in by a story. We have emotional responses to a story, whether it's positive or negative. So the more that you can share about the, the journey and the story behind the business and the story behind the why of what you're doing, um, the better because people are going to feel that connection and ha- feel like they've found their place. Um, Karen was mentioning there about candidates want to see what's going to happen. They want to um, envisage what's going to come next and how, how long everything is going to take. So your hiring process is another great opportunity for you to show your culture as well. Um, having having there being a place somewhere on your website where showing the process and explaining why you have the process in place is also going to show that you care about protecting that culture and you care about the level of work that you're putting out and you want to make sure that it's the right people that are going to be delivering that to your clients. A really good example of this is Pink Pig Financials. So this example here, this is a blog. This is Ellie from Pink Pig. And she was writing this blog as she was traveling around Europe in a camper van with her husband. And at Pink Pig, remote working really literally does mean working from anywhere. I know there will be some, I hear stories of some businesses who are, who say, you know, they're telling us that we can work remotely, but then actually they want us to come in. Like they advertise as being remote, but then actually it's more of a hybrid model. So um, for Pink Pig, they really are showing that they mean what they say. One of their um, values is lifestyle. And they the, the lifestyle value, part of the definition is that you're, you're, life is is high up there in priority so your business and your work can fit around that lifestyle and so they're they they're showing that they they mean what they say there they they want that for their clients they want that for the team and it's super super important that you can showcase some of that and we will talk a little bit more about um how that all works so one action you can take right now is to do a bit of a brand audit, to take some time to hear from your team about what they love, what could be better. And asking for feedback from the team can be really scary, but it's important that you encourage the the open feedback so that you know what needs to be fixed and you can and, and worked on. The the other positive side to it is that you can share a lot of the marketing or share a lot of the positive feedback in your marketing. Getting all feedback, you are able to to improve things and make sure that your company culture is what you hope it is, getting that feedback. Um, And we've been doing that more and more with the PF team where we've been doing, Steph, you said it yesterday in the team meet, um, we love a survey and that really does allow us to hear very openly from the team that the the culture is what we think it is because like everything else if you can if you make a statement about something that doesn't even that doesn't mean necessarily mean that it's true you need the the backing from the from the team to show that that is really true and your culture is what it what you say it is it also needs to be consistent feedback like it's not enough as with any survey it is never enough to send out one survey to your clients or to your team or whatever and say what do you think about the company you know for a client it would be do you recommend us to other people for a team member be what what is your 
uh, view on the culture right now, or how are you enjoying your job, or how are things going for you, I guarantee you, you send that out this week, you could get totally different answers from next week. Because we all know what it's like. You have a bad day. You're sick. You're tired. You're, you had a difficult thing with a client. So then you get the survey and you're going, oh my gosh, it's so hard. And then a week later, you've won three new clients and they're the best ever. And you know, you had this positive thing happen. You're like, this is the best company ever. So this is why you need to be doing it regularly. So you get that honest feedback. Like Elaine was saying, those two things, what is great about here and what isn't the best for you right now. And that could be a, a survey, like a Google form. It could be just talking about it in a team meet or a training or whenever you get your people together. But take it like these words that Elaine's showing here are literal word for word what a team member said in a team meet. And we just took that, wrote it down at the time because we said, gosh, that was really lovely what you said. And we wrote it down and then we put it there. We didn't say, Katie, would you like to say some nice words about PF? We took nice words that she honestly said and then put them there. Now, I can guarantee you that Katie and Steffi and any of the PF team here have at times had some hard things to say about PF. Same thing for any company. And that's okay. That's what you that's what we want anyway. We want a very honest, transparent culture. So sharing this like, hey, it's not always perfect, but it's good. And here's what's good about it. Because remember, your ideal team member is wondering this. They're worried about this. Yeah. And I like the more that you can show all of this positive yeah. feedback, it is so, so powerful to hear these words. I was just even like preparing for our session today, I was reading through some of this. I'm like, God, this is so powerful. Yeah. Like seeing some of these words, like the when Steffi's talking about um you're giving me the resources to grow. These are the things that, that people care about, that they want to know that they can, they don't want to be jumping from job to job to job. They want to see that there's a career path and a progression and that they can grow with you. Um, I have been working with um, Starfish Accounting on a, on a culture um, campaign. And as part of that campaign, I had the the opportunity to sit down with their team members and just from that conversation it was like god you you've got it so right here because these team members are so aligned with the starfish brand obviously i know it almost as well as they do because but actually meeting the team you could really feel the alignment and that's what good hiring does starfish do have some challenges when it comes to hiring as well it's I'm not it's not easy but it's just being able to sit with the team which I don't often get to do and be like this this feels right this is this is a good culture and um, so that was really exciting and there was so much powerful stuff came out of that session that we were able to then transfer into their marketing so that it can get more and more people like the people that they already have on their team which is really really exciting yeah, it's that concept of marketing gold dust, which is the actual words that your clients say. It's the actual words that your team members say, because I guarantee you, you can try all day long to come up with an amazing phrase that you put on your website that is appealing to future team members. But there's nothing stronger than Elaine saying something or uh, one, one of those, you know, Claire or Ivy or any of those who are on this call, whatever it is that you and your team say about it. And if, if anyone listening doesn't have any team members yet, then say things that you know to be true. Say aspirational things that you want to be true, because that's what they want to know. They want to know wh wh who are you and who do you want to be? Now, all of this being said, sometimes you hire people and it doesn't work out. That happens to every company. It's happened to us. It happened to our clients. And when it happens once, you know, you're like, this happens. Okay, I'm going to learn from it. If it happens twice or three times, if it happens two or three times in the space of a short period of time, you start to have doubts. You start to have fears. You start to have wonderings of, I mean, we had a client tell us the other day, 
they had two major hiring issues in the space of a month. And she went, am I a bad business owner? Am I a terrible boss? That's what goes through your head. It's very natural to think that. But what we want to do is turn that round and say, you know, the very fact that you're worried about whether you're a terrible boss means that you probably aren't. But also any experience you have with past team members, positive or negative, but often negative, that's an opportunity. That's an opportunity for you to say, do you know what? We tried this and it didn't work. We hired this person or this role and it didn't work. And here's the deal. Don't blame the equipment means don't always go to, well, it was because we hired from LinkedIn. That never works. It's because we did it by word of mouth. It's because of the team member. They just weren't the right person. It wasn't the right role. Don't blame the equipment means that if you're a tennis player and you have a really horrible game, your first response is not to be, a, you know, it's a damn racket. That's the problem. That's the core reason I didn't win the game. If I go swimming, this happened to me a couple weeks ago. I went swimming. Something was going wonky with my goggles and they kept, water kept coming into the goggles. So I couldn't do the flip turn at the end of the, at the end of the pool. I had to just swim back and forth. So it makes the things shorter. Now I could have been like these damn goggles. It's the goggles fault. That's the problem. That's the issue here. That's why I couldn't have a good swim. But about halfway through, I thought, well, I have two choices. I can be super annoyed and keep blaming the goggles. Or I can say, well, have I taken care of the goggles? Did I dry them properly? Are these, do I need to buy new goggles? Do I need to tighten them? Like there's a responsibility that I have as the swimmer. And yes, maybe the goggles are not working. But interestingly, that was a one-off and the goggles have been perfect since. So I don't think it was. I think it was just one of those times. The same thing applies with hiring. Don't jump to only blaming the team member. Oh, well, it's because they whatever. And then you absolve yourself of all responsibility and it's not your fault, but then you go into the next hiring going, well, are we going to have the same thing happen? So don't blame the equipment, but go back to the previous team members and think about anyone who never worked out, particularly those who never worked out because that tells you what to look for for future team members. This is also, if we go back to our, our values conversation and culture conversation, is there anything that you might be missing that you could have shown them that would have helped you to realize that they weren't a fit for you? You know, just because somebody applies does not mean they're going to be great for your firm. Just the same thing with a client. Just because a client or a potential client asks for help does not mean you have to serve them. It might be a no. It might be, gosh, this is a really nice person, but they are not a fit for this company and they're not a fit for this role. And a lot of the firms we've worked with have had that happen where they've said, well, I'm not sure if they're the right person, but they're really nice. They've been looking for a job for a long time. My sister recommended them or whatever it be. And then it doesn't work out. And they're like, oh, see, I knew it. I knew it. I knew that wasn't going to work out. Well, if you knew it, then you need to fix your hiring process so it doesn't happen again. And some of the ways that you can do that, we were talking about what you can show some of the ways you can do that are by explaining how does the hiring process work? What are the values and skills that you're going to be testing for? Just a side note on values and skills. When you're early on in your firm or your business and you either don't have any team members or don't have very many, 100% has to be value. Skills you can hire for or train for. You can train them up. If they don't have all of the skills, you can get them there. As you grow as a firm, you don't have time for that. You need to get going. You need somebody to hit the ground running. So you have to equally have values and skills, but never ever hire for skills without values. Never do that. Because when you do that, you have somebody who's technically good at their job, but doesn't fit the culture, doesn't fit the company, doesn't fit the firm, doesn't like the kind of clients that you work with, doesn't fit with the rest of the team or whatever it be. You have values for a reason. So what you're showing them in your marketing is you're saying, here's who we truly are. Here's the values we live out. These are the kind of clients we work with. This is the kind of work you'll be doing. 
this is the extra benefits that we give. And if somebody doesn't like that or doesn't want that or pushes back or, you know, we've had people share that they had a potential team member who every question was just all about money, 100% about money, nothing about anything else. And that was a, a warning sign for them. Um, think about the um, red flags, pink flags, green flags, gold flags. Red flags means it's an obvious, like it is absolutely not going to work. They said or did something terrible or they absolutely don't have the, the skills. It's a no. Pink flag means, well, it could go either way. We're not quite sure. Let's keep testing. Green flag is, is really good. I love that they said this. I love that they did this. And gold flag is, wow, as far as I can tell, can we hire this person yesterday and also every person that they're friends with? Because, man, this is amazing. Um, and the things that you're doing, a great question just came in. How do you determine their values? Such a great question because it's like the pre-qualifying for a client, you don't ask a potential client, hey, are you a good client? Are you going to pay your bills on time? I mean, if you ask them, they'd be like, of course, I'm going to be the best client ever and I will pay all my bills on time and I'll value everything you say. Of course, they would say that. Nobody's going to say, actually, I'm kind of a horrible person and I've got outstanding debts a mile long and I've been through six accountants. They're not going to tell you that. So you have to ask questions in your hiring process that give you an indicator and you've got to ask them to tell stories. Tell us about a time when. What was the last time this happened? What's the most annoying thing to you right now? Their answer is going to tell you a lot. You know, if somebody's like, hey, what's the most annoying thing? And they say, oh, well, the most annoying thing is that my local gym changed their hours and I had to find a new gym but actually that was a good experience because this, and you know, you learn about them that exercise is important and they're willing to try different things, whatever. You ask somebody else what the most annoying thing is and they say, well, currently the most annoying thing is my job because the company I'm with sucks and that's why I'm looking for a job. Kind of tells you something. So you need to be asking questions that are clever, the kind of questions that help you to see what they're really like and you want patterns. You want to ask as many questions as possible. This is actually why PF has a seven stage hiring process because I remember distinctly the stage at which I got frustrated that you can have the most amazing two hour interview with an amazing person that you think is so great. And then you find out they cannot actually do the job. This was like eight years ago. And I went, why am I spending an hour or two hours with somebody I think is so great if they're not able to actually do the job? What kind of tester project can we give them so they can prove they could do the job? Same thing with if they say things in an interview, give them a chance to prove it. You know, tell us a story about, uh, here's a form to have somebody else fill in and tell us a story about you. And then have lots of those so that you can look for those patterns. And this circles us around to not just telling people what you're like as a company, but showing it because this is what you're expecting them to do as well. You're expecting the potential team member to not just tell you who they are and what they're like, but to show it. So again, in our we have a seven stage hiring process. I know many of our clients have a three stage or five stage or whatever it be. I don't care how many stages you have. I do care that you have more than one and ideally more than two. A lot of firms have two stages, one interview to some other, you know, might be a tester project, might be a second interview, it might be the CV and that's it. And they go, wow, they seem great. You need as many stages as you need to test the things that they're telling you. I hate to say it, but you cannot believe what people put on CVs sometimes. Sometimes people stretch the truth a bit or they leave stuff out. And this is their opportunity and your opportunity for the both of you to show what you're really like. I mean, they're evaluating you as well. So when you're showing and not telling, you don't just say, hi, we're XYZ firm and we have values of integrity and creativity 
and generosity and rest. Those are our values and those are important. You can say that until kingdom come, but if you don't have a way of showing that, show how do you show your generosity? Do you have a, a video of some team members who are giving away lots of um, helpful advice, not not giving away services, but saying, you know, we're being generous with our advice and our knowledge or integrity saying, you know, we only work with clients who are, you know, willing to do these things, or these are a couple clients that we love because they had a tough thing and they worked through it in this way. And here's a video from them showing that you want people to look at your website and your marketing and your videos and your uh, socials and all of these and get a sense of the kind of firm that you are so that it goes beyond writing the values on a website page or on your wall. And a good example of this is the firm map. They happen to be our accountants. And I remember the day that Paul, who's the owner, told me about their team meets every Friday. And he said, what we do is we go around and each person recognizes a map team member for one of these values. So they say, well, I'd like to recognize this team member. They're really caring when they dealt with a client who had a really sad thing happen and they showed care and they sent them a gift or they showed up at their office or they did whatever. Or I want to recognize this team member for being brave because they showed up at a networking event that we ran and they talked to new people and that's really scary for them. And so that was really brave and well done. And it just struck me at that time that they were taking their values and living it out with their current team. So you want to be doing that in your hiring process too. If you're saying that you're dependable and team player and brave, then you want to be asking questions and having them tell stories about things so you can tell if this person actually is brave or a team player, dependable or whatever it be. And then you need to have videos and posts and comments. This is back to Elaine's point about tone of voice, which means the way that you say things either written format or video or however it be, but the way that you say things comes across and they're getting a sense of whether this is true because the team member is thinking, are they really caring? Do they actually, like, what does being a team player mean? Or is that just one of those phrases? You know, there's billions of companies out there that have phrases on their website and we're all sort of like, Mm, really? You know, especially those big companies that we know about, like a phone company or an electricity company. I'm naming no names, but I'm just picking the big broad ones that we all have had issues with. Airlines, perhaps. And they're like, listen, we care about you. And you're standing there at the airport trying not to shout at somebody for something that's happened. And you're like, do you though? <laughs> do you really? That's the kind of feeling that your potential team member has because they're worried that this isn't going to be for real. And you're worried too. You're going, listen, this is a lot of effort to go through to hire somebody. It's a very costly exercise to hire a new person. So if it doesn't work out, then you have to start it all over again. So you don't want to hire the wrong person to the best of your ability. It's going to happen. It's always going to happen at some point. But you want to do the best that you can to make it something that works out so that if you get all the way through the end of the stages and the person says, actually, this isn't the job for me, that your answer is great. I'm glad that you came to the decision that's right for you. And the same for you. If I mean, we've had clients who've got all the way to the end of the hiring process and went, not the right person. This thing's come up, this thing's come up. And that is always okay. It's, it's not a fail to realize that the answer is no, because you want a yes or a no. So there's a, like, whatever your values are. I mean, I know Matt puts it on the wall at their firm, but it's not just on the wall, it's lived out. Did you have another story you were going to share about Starfish, Elaine? Yes, I did. Sorry. Yeah. Now I'm going to start coughing. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so, um, a few months ago, I was having a conversation with Starfish and what this is what led to the to the culture campaign. I was having a conversation with them around their struggles or tiring. And they were telling me all this wonderful stuff that they do with the team and everything that they offer. And I'm like, but where are you showing this? 
where are you like I know that you're you have a great brand and you have a lot to offer the team knows you know where are we showing this so it led us to create a culture hub to really spell it out because you think that you're being really clear on some career pages as well and it's great like the majority of career pages will you will have values on there but really is that showing all the things that you can offer like we were talking about before when we were looking at Steffi and Katie's um testimonials there these these things that you are you just kind of like oh that's just something that we do and some of the things that they were listing off to me it was very flippant the way that we were explaining it so that is what brought us to this culture page so that we could define this and make it really clear about you know this is the business bit this is what we're about Mm -hmm. but then this is what you get this is why working for us and working with us is so great um, so it really gives the idea being this page isn't live yet, but the idea being that when people land on this, they're like, OK, great. Like I'm getting a little bit of a peek behind the curtain here to see what life is like at Starfish, mm-hmm. because they want to know as much as possible to make a decision. They may be interviewing for several different firms. And being able to see more of this and showing um, what the firm and a candidate can do together, because that's what it is, it's mutually beneficial. And um, it could be the candidate candidate gets all the way through the hiring process and then decides, actually, no, this isn't the place for me. They're also learning a lot about you when they're going through that process. And um, So the more that you can show all of this stuff, that's the thing that's really going to set you apart from other firms that might be in their lineup. Um, And yeah, we'll help you kind of retain that really good uh, talent. We will eventually have some videos from the team on this page as well, so that, that you can hear, for lack of a better phrase like you can hear it from the horse's mouth (laughs) about what it's actually like because again you can see the words but when you hear it come out of Andrea's mouth that is that's completely different and it's a lot more uh, powerful she's telling the story of when Georgie did the interview in a soft play where their kids could all play together because they needed she needed that flexibility around her raising her twins Mm -hmm. um so just more and more that you can pull out of your team and and showcase potentially on our card it might not be a culture page but show more and more of that on your hiring page yeah it's such a great reminder that money is either not the main thing or it might not even be the thing at all for Mm. some people when they're looking for a job and i again same concept as with potential clients you know, you have a prospect that you think, oh, they're never going to work with us because this quote is too high. Most of the time, it's not about the money. It's about their perception of value. It's about what they think they're getting. It's about their understanding of that. And it's about the connection that they have with you and the team. Same thing for a potential team member. They, they may be quite passionate about having a certain salary, but it's more likely that they're passionate about the kind of business it is. And if they care about things like remote working or flexibility or hybrid or maternity leave or whatever it be, mentorship, training, growing, whatever they're interested in, they want to hear about that and how does that work? And they don't just want a token, you know, here's a list of a few things. And a lot of the firms that we've worked with have started doing this of, you know, this is what we do. This is who we are. This is what you will get. That's probably the number one tip that I can give you for your hiring is to change your whole role description explanation to say, here's what you get. Put that front and center because they can read about the role title and the role descriptions and the role KPIs, but they're coming because they want to know what they can get. What am I going to get from working for this firm? How am I going to feel? Who do I get to work with? This is why it's important to show at least pictures, but ideally videos, so that they're like, oh, 
Georgie seems nice. Oh, there's a video of Georgie talking about that. I can I can sense the honesty and transparency there. And Emma and, and the team members. So I love that Elaine was mentioning there's going to be videos coming. You know, if you say we invest heavily in training and then you have a video from somebody say the last training I did at Starfish was this and that actually helped me with this and I loved it. That's that extra proof. Another thing that's really powerful is little pieces on social media, whatever social you use, whether it's LinkedIn, Instagram, TikTok, whatever, those little pieces are what people pick up on the patterns of. I've had friends tell me, they're like, listen, I don't know anything about marketing, but can I come and work for PF? Because I love that you do this. I love your team retreats. I love your colors. I love your people. I met a bunch of your team members and they all seem like great people and I'd love to hang out with them. That's the sort of feeling you want the right team member to have where they're picking up these little pieces. They see an Instagram story. They see a LinkedIn post. Their mind is putting these pieces together before they even inquire. And that's what you want to drip feed that because when the person realizes that you're hiring, maybe that's the first time they've ever heard of you and they go to your website and they go to all of this, but maybe they've been following you for some time. And the moment you have a role available, they're like, hey, that's that company who, what? What is it that they're going to say? That's that company who seems so pleasant, loves to take care of their team, does lots of training. Or conversely, it could be some negative things. They could be like, oh, that's that company who's always complaining about the clients they have or a company who's always, you know, uh, defending themselves or whatever it be. And that's none of you here listening, of course, that's somebody else. But you want them to be connecting to who you truly are and whatever level of transparency you want to have. You know, if you want to say, hey, this is really tough and I'm going to be honest about it. But that's what this potential team member is looking for. And that's why you've got to show and not tell, not just tell, because there's only so much that they're going to believe from what you say in words, they're looking for proof. So this is a video, uh, it's just a screenshot, so it doesn't show you all of them. But if you if you scroll through this video from Pink Pig on their careers page, Cheryl, who's the owner, starts off with the video, but then five or six other team members are also saying, here's what I like about working at Pink Pig. Here's what I like. Here's what I do every day. That sort of the video, I cannot stress enough how important video is because they're going to meet you. They're going to be in a Zoom call or an interview call or even in person. So you may as well give them as much as possible early on so that they go, oh, yes, that matches. That's the kind of thing that I was expecting. That's the kind of thing I thought it would be in a positive way. And you also want them once they're hired, presuming they're the right person, that every day once they're hired to be going, oh, wow, hey, this is even better than I thought. Hey, these team members are even, I get along with them even better since then. You know, you want that to grow and grow, not, oh, this is going to be the best job ever. Oh, oh, there's that. Okay. Oh, no, there's that as well. Oh, that's a bummer. You don't want them going up and then getting dropped down. You want them to start here and then continually being like, oh, wow, that's, oh, look, I didn't realize that they were really serious when they said you could work remotely and I could work from Bali or Vietnam or Australia or America or wherever I want to be. So the more you can show that, and some of that's words, some of that's videos, some of it's social posts, then all of that is what's combining together into your employer brand. Because your employer brand is all of these things, just in the same way as your, your firm brand is not just your name and logo, your employer brand is your values, how you show those values, the words that you use, the videos that you share, the social posts, the roles available, the things that your current team members say, things that past team members say even. Um, all of those things combine together to give somebody a sense about who your firm is. And then from that, they can decide if they want to take that first step. And that's all we're doing. That's all we're doing in hiring is getting them to take that first step and apply. 
And then you go through all the stages and you look for those patterns and you ask questions and you have questionnaires and interviews. Um, just circling back to George's question about understanding their values. And we talked about patterns and we talked about um, many different ways to sense this. Have a variety of ways that you ask questions. Ask the questions in a form, like a Google form or a survey questionnaire. Ask the questions in an interview, uh, a, a video interview. Ask the questions in person if you have the opportunity to meet with them in person. Ask the questions uh, by getting them to tell you a story. Ask, Have them to submit things, submit a video, submit um, a uh, tester project, submit something to show what they're doing both ways, but the more variety of things that you have, the less they're going to be able to hide what the true situation is. Because sadly, some people are trying to hide it. They're trying to give you like a nice shiny picture, the highlight reel, and they're not showing you their true selves. Your job in your whole employer brand is to be showing who you are so that when you're looking for these people, they can be showing you who they are. So consistency then is the key. It's the same as marketing for new clients. Marketing is like a steam engine. So if you start the steam engine up and it's completely cold and you're just putting the coal in and just lighting the fire, it's gonna take a while for that engine to start going chug, chug, chug up the hill. You're not gonna be going at top speeds and that's okay, it starts slow. But the more you keep putting that coal on the fire and keep going and keep chugging, the faster and faster and faster you go. And then you hit the top of the hill and you woo, woo and you can swoop down the hill and go around the corner and it's all wonderful. And you think, oh, this is so great. That's how your employer brand works too. You don't have to, at the end of this masterclass today, be like, okay, I need a careers page. I need videos from every single one of the team. I need social media posts on every social platform. That's not that's not um, reasonable because you need to do a few things and do them consistently. So pick one thing from today's masterclass that you can take and say, is there one video that we could record that would show and not tell? Is there one social post that I could do maybe weekly or even monthly? I don't care if it's every two weeks or every month, as long as it's consistent. Because if you do one and then you don't do another one for two years, in two years time, somebody's like looking around for who you are as a firm. And the last thing that they see is that you posted once on Instagram two years ago. It's not going to be so impressive. But if you're saying, hey, every week we're going to feature a different team member and they're going to share something they love about working here or a client they love working with, you're going to have this lovely compilation by the time you get to hiring because you need to always be hiring. You're always be hiring in the sense that you're showing off your employer brand so that when you're ready to hire, you don't have to suddenly try and show people who you are. They already know. So my question for you from all of those things that we've talked about today, and feel free to put it in the chat box if you want to say, hey, this is the thing that I need to focus on. What is the one thing that is the most important for you to focus on? Is it video? Is it social posts that are consistent and show who you are? Is it showing a little more of your values? Um, is it introducing team members? Is it something in the hiring process that you could change to make it a little more visible to them? Is it going back to previous team members who didn't work out and asking yourself the honest question of what you could have done better? It's always something you can do better. I know this is a business owner myself. No matter how disastrous something can be in your business, whether it's hiring or clients or whatever, there's always something that you can learn and go, do you know what? Next time, I'm going to make this little change, this little thing that I'm going to do. That's going to be my learning. Some of it is your responsibility, some of it's not, but it's always your responsibility how you react to it. So that's the question that I have for you. Um, Elaine, do you have a kind of a one point about branding you want to make sure we leave them with? Hmm. When it comes to hiring. Uh, 
I would say that having looking at the culture and being able to go back to the root go back to the core if you're really struggling with like why are we not getting the right people through mm -hmm. here when you're using a recruitment agency where you think I'm I'm getting the right I'm going to get the right person because I'm paying a hell of a lot of money for it mm -hmm. <laughs> and there's that quite often is the root of you're getting someone good through but it is like it's the it's the culture fit mm -hmm. it was pulling it back to that culture knowing who you are and what you can offer to be able to to get the right people into your into your brand and into your company yeah i like that reminder that we said about branding is that branding is a reflection of who you truly are so if something is off with your branding, then either it's not visually representing who you truly are, or there's something you need to fix or address about who you truly are and make that just that little bit better so that it matches. Yeah. So if you do want to have a conversation with us about how this applies to your firm, there's a discovery form that you can fill in. I mean, I'll tell you, I know that this is about potentially working with PF, but the questions we ask in that discovery form are on purpose. We want to work with clients we love. We want you to work with clients you love. So we're going to ask questions that give us a little sense of who you are. The same thing applies to hiring. Um, the forms that we have people fill in and that our clients have people fill in when they are potentially working with the firm, they ask for these things that reveal who the person truly is. And just a side note as well, a lot of firms I've started talking to or I've been talking to um, require a video at the beginning of the hiring process. That's not new. We've seen firms doing it for years, but I'm seeing a lot more firms and a lot other companies that aren't accountants doing it because that's part of that show don't tell. So I know um, one of the comments in the chat is looking at the recruitment process and the interview questioning. Absolutely. Change those type of questions. Get them to submit things. Get them to submit a video or a test or project. So that because both of you are evaluating this employer brand and saying, is this is this for real? Is this the place that we want? So pick one of those things. Feel free to share it with us. You can fill in this discovery form, or if you just have a resource you're looking for, you can just email team at wearepf.com and say, hey, I'm looking for, because uh, we've got resources on the recruitment process, on hiring stages, on questions for interviews, on values. There's loads of resources on that, but feel free to fill in that discovery form. And we can just have a conversation about how we can apply that marketing to your firm specifically because that's what we love to do. All of these great principles are here and they're good principles, but it's how they apply to each one of your firms because each of you have an amazing firm and that needs to be shown in your marketing. Thanks for joining us today and we'll look forward to seeing you in a future masterclass. Thanks. Thanks. Bye.